196 and a half kilometers from Bourg d'Oison to Saint-Étienne. Stage 18 takes the race away from the foot of Alpe d'Huez and then out of the Alps altogether via third, second and fourth category climbs. The last of them just eight kilometers from the finish in Saint-Étienne. There was a crash early in the stage. In it were Philippe Gilbert of Francis de Jure and the man in 14th place overall, Lampre's Damiano Cunigo. He was the worst off of the two and from the looks of things had slid face first along the tarmac. Once he'd been patched up, he had a Lampre escort back into the race, but obviously was in quite poor shape because in the end, his teammates were reduced to keeping him company at the back of the race. Now, a slightly untidy breakaway today. Uh, Marcus Berghardt of Team Colombia and Carlos Barredo of Quickstep, a German and a Spaniard, got away. There are three men behind them, Mikel Astarlosa, Christophe Lemavel and Romain Feu at about four minutes, with the peloton another five minutes behind them. Well, this is one of Burkhardt's greatest moments on a single stage of the Tour de France, a chance of a stage win, and uh, that would be a terrific result for him anyway, and great for the team who've done nothing, and are being criticised for it in the Belgian newspapers. Oh, and he's gone again, the minute we Burkhardt cut away, but gone. this time it is Burkhardt who has gone, and Barredo is going to have to be put on the defensive here, and now that is how you launch an attack, he's making Ber Barredo work so hard here. Well, he's uh, probably got a little bit fed up by the fact that the Spanish rider had hit him hard three times in succession, and now his legs are really pinging. He's looked over his shoulder, he's got a little bit of a gap, but Barredo is clawing his way back to the wheel. <laughs> oh. I think Barredo has got this one covered, Phil. He's got this one covered, I think, yes, for around that roundabout, but if Barredo thinks he's got it covered, then he might lose the gap. But I think this time he'll nail him back. Now, there's no friends left up here now. They're not going to trust each other. So you can watch behind. The time will just start to drop that. down. This that was how it happened. happened. Uh, good move there and a perfect way to attack. The Raider was calling it through to do the work at the front and Burkhardt decided to try one. We're looking at the three chasers here as they try to have their own private battle over that little climb. Meanwhile, up front, goodness knows what Barredo is saying. Let's have a look at their faces. They're just trying to reach an agreement to help and work to the finish and then sprint it out, would be my guess. Now, where are we now? We're back in the bunch here. This is an attack by the coffee Sammy this rider. It's Sammy Dumoulin, the little man in the race, who's trying to launch on this last climb of the race today. Further up the road, these two still locked in their own personal battle. Ten minutes ahead of the main field. Two kilometres to go in around about a kilometre fill. They will come to the Andre Kivilev roundabout and then they will uh, face uh, three or four nasty little bends while a little bit further back it is Kurdziger who's got away. And, and I'm that pretty could be Schleck who's coming across. Yes, Schleck. it is. He's got the reaction because he's only 13 seconds ahead of Kreuzinger and so we did get an attack for the few seconds. Well, that's a very good move by Andy Schleck and Andy Schleck is going to... Uh, not really ruffled too many feathers in the group, Phil, because he's ten and a quarter minutes in arrears, but here he's trying to make sure he keeps himself in contact for the race for the best young rider. Meanwhile, back in the race for the sprint here, these two Ooh. are just giving no quarter it's now. getting a bit nasty now when you start zigzagging like that. If you get it wrong, you can cause the other rider in the group with you to come off, and I wouldn't like to see that after they've been great friends. They've worked together to build up this lead. They've got over the chases, Phil, and over the other riders in the main field. So now they need to just have a safe, straight drag strip sprint to the line. Well, this group now, though, is actually going to move away from the front end of the main field and just getting on the back there. There was a quick Leif glimpse Hoster. of Leif Hoster. Now he's thinking about just marking the uh, Andy Schleck. He's One the kilometre. Cadell, he's the Cadell policeman been sent up there to watch what's going on in the stalls. One kilometre to go and they haven't rid each other, so it's going to be a sprint or somebody has got to hit the surprise button to shake in the lactic out of the big legs of Marcus Burkhart. This is the left-hand turn where they took all the traffic furniture out, just on the right there, they're riding through it now. And they won't see the finishing line until the very last moment. There's a left turn, a left turn and a left turn, or they're really basically sweepers. After a long breakaway like this, you've got to back off the sprint, and I think Burkhardt has got to wait a fraction. He's got to lead the sprint out. He's got the power, I think, but when he get, once he gets the jump, I don't think Barredo will be able to come out of his wheel, and that's what Barredo is banking on. Barredo will try and be the rider to jump first and get the surprise, but probably not until two or 300 metres to go. Well, the American team, Colombia, taking on at the Belgian team of Quickstep. 
As they now go towards the line here, anybody can make the move. It is, in fact, Marcus Burkhardt, a German, against the Spanish rider Beredo. They are so tense here, they're going to make this a very late dash for the line. 500 metres. They're looking round the corner. They haven't yet, Phil, quite seen the finishing barrier over the line. Now Burkhardt decides to wind it up. He's challenging the Spaniard to come over the top. Come on, mate, you start the sprint first and I'll respond. Beredo has to wait until the very last minute. 400 metres to go. Well, this is the slowest sprint we've had since the Tour de France began. They both want this stage for different reasons. Beredo slightly the advantage of surprise here. He just keeps looking at his man. We could be on the velodrome in a world championship track sprint now, as these two riders are so twitchy, but they know they'll get one shot, and only one shot. Beredo is trying to nudge him to make the attack. Now they've gone for the line, Mano on Mano, side by side, but I think Marcus Burkhardt is going to be a little bit too quick here. The man who's helped Cavendish to all of his wins now gets one for himself. I'm not surprised Beredo is so upset, but really, against Burkhardt, Paul, he had no hope. Well, he tried, he tried every trick in the book there, and he could do nothing to outwit the German. Burkhardt getting another great win for Team Colombia. Yes, five now for the sport's newest sponsors, four courtesy of Mark Cavendish, of course, and an easy win in the end for Marcus Burkhardt after all the false starts, ahead of a furious but well-beaten Carlos Barredo. Behind them, Romain Fayou beat Christophe Lemavelle and Mikhail Astalosa in the sprint for third. There you go, Burkhardt, Barredo, Feu, Lemavelle, Astalosa. The result, Germany, Spain, France, France, Spain. And in the next mini-group behind them, Andy Schleck, and the only man close to him in the young rider competition, Roman Kreuziger. So Andy Schleck comes, but watch out, Roman Kreuzinger, Dumoulin forcing it through, a little bit of a kick. The man that won at Nantes in the first week of the Tour de France is sweeping up for the French today, and he gets home in sixth place. And here's the main field, and after all of that chase over the last few kilometres, it didn't really feel give very many people a great advantage. And across the road, it's the sprinters, Zabel, Hushoft and Oscar Freire. Freire got the sprint from Zabel and Hushoft on the line. So more points in the bag against his main rivals in the green jersey competition. That is going to be Oscars in Paris for sure. Andy Schleck less sure of the white jersey, though. That'll go down to the final time trial. He finished 10th. All the names you'd expect finished in the main field too. Six minutes 50 behind the winner. Chris Froome was on the other side of a small split in a group at 7 minutes 07. 20 minutes after the winner across the line, the day's crash victim Damiano Kunigo came over with four teammates for moral support. 